this is as close as passive as you can go because all the lights are LEDs. Very little consumption on a cooking and washing level. We easily adjust the intensity. What? What happened? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. It was early 2020 when Lottie's parents told us of a double foundation for sale in a small northern village where Lottie's dad grew up. In Czech Republic, it's a multi-year process to get a house approved for construction, so we had never once considered building one from scratch. But this foundation had a $20,000 price tag, and it came with a number of size and shape regulations, but also pre-approval, which meant that if we did purchase, we could start building right away. We jumped on it. And after some discussion, Lottie's parents decided to buy the plot next to us, which would make the construction of both tiny homes faster and more affordable. The world was on lockdown and our nomadic lifestyle on hiatus, so we had decided to do what we had never done, build a bunch of stuff all at once. The goal being that when the world was back to normal, we could resume adventuring and actually have a place to go if this were to ever happen again. The building process was slow and spanned over three years. We were scraping together funding, and often the cabin was put on the back burner for other projects at our workshop, where we were living at the time. In total, including the land, materials, labor, and decor, we spent 95,000 US dollars for this property, which was only possible because of the help of our family and friends here in Czech, most of whom are very talented tradesmen. At the beginning, I was very skeptical of this project, probably because I'm from the US. Homes touching is something you see in Brooklyn apartments, not in rural countryside where space feels unlimited. But it didn't take long for me to realize that out of the eight units on this strip, most of the time we're the only ones here. As I sit here editing this video, I just remembered something Lottie said to me at the start of these three intense years of building. I was anxious and full of doubt, and he put both hands on my shoulder and said, I'm never going to be this young and motivated again. So if we build something now, I'm going to make sure it's badass. The driving leads to the back of the cabin where we have this untouched forest with a lot of birds in it. It's awesome. Listen to the bird sounds. Enough firewood for probably three years. We're in the mountains, it's, it's colder here. This is a small sheltered space, uh, mainly planned for e-bikes. I love the natural light. It was an original idea from dad, uh, giving us all of this natural light straight to the kitchen inside. Uh, we have outlets all over the place that's for charging bikes. Hey, Radek, you still owe us the tiles. You're slacking, I made your kitchen a while ago. Welcome to the inside of cabin. It's a small space, a small house. It's two bedroom and one and a half bath. Right off the bat, built into the hallway is this nice surface area that's kind of the entryway. You can put all of your stuff here in and out quickly. And then below is storage for like bags and winter gear. Then we have the bathroom right when you come in. It's a small bathroom, but it's also a small cabin. This is plenty spacious for the two people that we are now. There's a lot of surface areas to put all of your stuff and the shower is luxe. It's the first nice shower I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> And then the technical room, which is kind of the boring zone, to That's be honest. the boring stuff. Yeah. Built-in shelving, at least, to be able to use all of the walls because it is so small. Lots of Lottie's tools, cleaning stuff, cat litter, and of course, a 3D printed cat door. Lottie and I love design, so we really tried to optimize the flow of coming in here, and we tried to maximize the space because it is really small entry. So all of this was custom built at the workshop, along with all of the furniture in the cabin. This is for our coats, hats, purses, shoes, all of the little stuff that you need to bring to your car. 
We have to show the slippers. This is the best part of the whole cabin. Yeah! This small hallway leads into the open living space, which we kind of broke down into different zones. I like open space a lot, but I don't like when it's just one big blob. I like when you can actually visually, visually separate the spaces. We did tiles from the entry area all the way to the kitchen and dining because it's a high traffic area, it's easy to clean, it's easy to maintain. This TV and media zone is carpeted together with this U-shaped custom couch right by the window. This is like a chill zone. This is like where you open up a book and get lost with the views from the window. I love bringing people in and seeing like where they naturally fall, you know. <laughs> So immediately you feel the comfort from the feet up subconsciously and only these ambient lights support that feeling. We really love these dimmers that are very simple remote controls for the LEDs. So we did this drywall receives uh, LEDs lighting to the corner of that and with these controllers we easily adjust the intensity and turn them on and off so these two zones are turned on separately it's like invisible walls and also to separate the media zone from the whole space was using a different color and different texture in the background stretching all the way to the ceiling So this is a pretty compact kitchen, but for us coming from a camper van and then a workshop that didn't even have a kitchen, this is still quite a lot of space for us. A lot of it's empty though. We don't use many of these. We took a bit of a risk with this fan hood extractor. Uh, because commonly they are hanging off the ceiling, they are blocking the space, making boundaries between you and other guests. So this one is mounted almost to the ceiling. We were not sure if it's going to work or not. Angling the drywalls only made it more modern looking. They work flawlessly and uh, we are very happy with it. Island bar was quite a necessity in this space. And we have a lot of surface drawers for small things. These ambient lights are cool because they're spotlights. So even though you're consuming media, you're not really blind by this. And you have the light exactly where you need it. Dishwasher right here, full size, and a granite a sink. We tried this uh, flexible tab for the first time. We were not sure what to choose and we slowly replace them throughout our entire uh, life and existence and all the appliances because they're really cool. We can blind and cover the whole space anytime with this called plissé. I've never seen it anywhere, only in Czech. And they're awesome, you can just cover, you know, certain section of the window. Magnetic. Boop. This is not common, this was an idea to use the same mechanism that is used on a balcony door. And we used it for the window here because commonly you're opening and hitting the tab and this is a good way around it. This appliance storage system has been in my head for some time and finally this was the first opportunity to use this concept. Everything covered, everything exposed. You want to use this, slide it out, it's always plugged in. You want to make a coffee, you want to make a toast, it's all in there. Can you imagine how much counter space all of this would take if it's spread all around? You can have it open all the time or just when you have guests, you want to have a neater look. Build-in microwave, build-in oven and a pantry. 
this is a small space we had to be very aware about utilizing it and this is one of the results built-in fridge for all americans this is um, a little fridge for birds <laughs> i own it um, that's just how it goes in europe freezer does the job storing all the ice cream especially this premium hazelnut and now with just a single step we switch zones <laughs> We got the breakfast bar here, but then we come into the sofa zone. As you can tell from looking around, we definitely went with like a yellow theme. We have little cup holding things on both sides of the couches. Push to open storage here for the PS2. And let me just say it was a nightmare to mount, but we got it done. And that leads into the U-shaped couch area. This is a really nice spot to be able to just relax and look out the window. I am going to name you Frankie. You are Frankie and we are friends. This nook has very specific dimensions, so the entire thing had to be custom made at the workshop. I would give it like a seven, six to seven out of 10 on like the comfort scale. Pillows improve the comfort. It could be a little bit better, but it's fun. We use it a lot, which is, I guess what counts. I'm not sure if we can call this a zone. I would say it's more of a feature. We have really good use to standing desks. And this is exactly that. It's awesome to be able to place things here, outlets for charging and the blind control. We went for these for the first time. These are the outside ones, motorized. How much light do you allow to go in? It always changes the mood inside. We built this because we were not sure what to do with this space yet. It might be a patio, it might be whatever, just a view, but it's nice to have the access there. For this, we did this custom unit. So just in case this is a separate entry, we can have a code hooks, 3D printed. And then storage for jackets and mm -hmm. our exercising. And then this is a nice space for a little yoga or a little stretches. We do this a lot. Should we really be honest and say that this is kind of like the cat play playroom? <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay, wait. Transition. <laughs> This dining table was my extra project at the workshop. It's a solid wood with a welded metal legs, kind of going inwards, make it more interesting. It's pretty unusual built-in outlet in the floor. Uh, just to have access to electricity and when you actually work here with a laptop, you have somewhere to plug in. So here's the cabin, there and there. It's really nice to have these on the wall and, and kind of see the cabin in its context, you know, in like the greater environment. It keeps things in perspective. This is interesting, a little piece. It's adjustable, look, you can extend it you can uh, change the size then obviously height adjustable and then you have different color temperatures and change the intensity of the light so if you really want to have this closed door intimate mood by the dining table 
you can set it up without guests even noticing you're manipulating their feelings. We like to host, so we made a simple bar kind of set up. Black cabinet, poison inside. Got the wine glasses, shot glasses, and of course the mixing station. Fireplace, it makes heat. Actually, there is a little bit more to it. So this is cool because it is a water exchanger. So you can set on a thermostat the water pump and a certain temperature when it reaches, it starts circulating from a boiler, 100 liters of water. What do we use this water for? That's for showering as a utility and also it runs through the whole cabin's radiators. So this is as close as passive as you can go because all the lights are LEDs very little consumption on a cooking and washing level because this is always the biggest power drain heating up the water and the space okay we got to show them upstairs but before we do we should talk about Rodno Rodno is located on the northern hills of eastern Czechia the Polish border is just 40 minutes away and when I first visited here it really blew my mind that Auschwitz is just over two hours from here as well the large hill behind us is called Velki Rodny and is an extinct volcano with a church and a lookout point on the top. The original homes in this province were mostly constructed out of volcanic rock picked from the farming fields. It's extra noticeable at Ladi's great-grandfather's old workshop, which is now in ruins. His trade was making those extra large wooden wheels used for horse carriages. Only recently did this area start getting some extra attention because of the lake, which is technically a reservoir. A nearby dam was constructed, which flooded a few villages and completely submerged another. If the water gets too low, the tippy top of an old church can be seen poking through the lake surface. This is the dock that picks people up for a water bus that then brings them across the lake to the neighboring village. This road used to lead to the village that is now across the lake, but they put in a dam, this whole area flooded. So this road is underwater and now kind of used as a boat loading zone. This is the village guardian. Best lookout. Hi buddy. This is the local government building for this village, which has about 350 residents, and it is currently under construction, like everything in Czech Republic. That's the dummy! <laughs> this is the local cemetery slash church of the town. And this is where Lottie's great-grandmother is buried. She and I share a birthday, literally exactly 80 years apart. And we're going to pretend like it's totally fine that he married her at 17 when he was 37. America My Face is saying everything that you need to know. Dot com. This is the bus stop. And this is the creepiest house I've ever seen in my life. It's a nice shortcut to the cabin. This area has really nice hiking. So we're going to squeeze down this way and cut across the fields. Last step. This is a nice demonstration of 3D printing usage for carpenters. There's the ends for handrails, there's the attachments for the bars, there is like an end mount type. This is Kind of depressing looking. But it will eventually fill up. We were in a camper van and then a workshop for this. So we don't really have stuff to like put on the shelf. But we have <laughs> so shelves. It's just, but we do have shelves. We have shelves. Wooden. We have another storage thing. It speaks for itself. This is the FaceTime zone. The Zoom section. And then of course, up close and personal uh, entertainment sectors of whatever kitten is populating our living space. And that closet's pretty cool. Pushed open, definitely smaller. However, everything that we need to hang fits in here really nicely. Pushed open down here. And then, 
everybody's always on our case about starting a family. And look at this, guys. We were thinking ahead, and we have two children's bedrooms. <laughs> what? And the bigger one for the oldest child. Mm -hmm. What? It must be a mistake. What? At the beginning of this video, we have like a one and a half bath. That's because this is what the Europeans call like a pocket bathroom. It's essentially just a toilet and a sink. Speeds up those late night cra cravings, impulses, what's the word? Needs. Needs. This is a pretty mind bugging. It's like a beehive. Entering the bedroom. Following the roof windows with a lot of natural light on our counter It's always easy to just bring bags place them here having everything um, kind of waist level This is Margaret's editing all-nighter zone Making most of the videos past what past half a year since we've been building it uh, inside yeah. interiors uh -huh. You can keep this open or closed. I like the open space, like you could tell uh, based on the first floor. This would not be practical if you want to sleep here, if you want to privacy, have this open. So the widest pocket door seemed to be pretty good solution because privacy, two separate rooms. This is as close as we could get to open floor type of a concept. Open shelves because this is a um, vacation house if you want to call it that way. So usually you bring things in and out. Open shelves just make more sense for this type of a setup. Drawers with uh, personal things and a big shelf with a subwoofer. There's a little sound bar glued on the 3D printed brackets. It's a nice little option where you can hide if you want to have the private space. But the best room. The best room is the one above us. After the first phone call about this land, we began brainstorming how the heck we'd be able to pay for it. At the time, we were making about $1,200 a month, and the world was in quarantine. We made the tough decision to sell our camper van. We realized we needed the startup money, and Lottie began building electric bikes while I learned to film it for YouTube. Most of what we've done since then has been uploaded to our channel every Sunday. But these past three months, we needed to take a step back from video creation to finish our projects and to refocus on the bike business, which has been quickly expanding with the rising interest in electric transport. We're now able to send a variety of e-bike models all around the world and supply builders with parts from our website. We've also been lucky enough to get a CNC to speed everything along. Plus a few more employees have joined at the workshop to lighten the load. Next week we're moving into our camper van for the summer and we'll likely not be spending as much time here at the cabin. But I can genuinely say that this place has been a life-saving sanctuary for the both of us. As grateful as we are for the hard work and the extraordinary support that we've received over these three years, the strain and the exhaustion from everything we decided to take on came very close to breaking us. This has been the only place where we could isolate and regroup, even if it was only for the weekend. We got to watch the seasons change and the curious animals snoop about, escape the sounds of the workshop, and spend more than 10 minutes cooking a meal. Most importantly, it's kind of been the place that Lottie and I got to reconnect as a couple, not just each other's coworker or business partner. It's here that we found true calm. We learned bits and pieces uh, about linear actuators on our camper van, uh, specially lifting bed or tilting the solar on a roof. So pretty much the same concept I tried to bring here and it actually didn't turn out 
as well as we thought. Listen to this. <laughs> this is not a sound you want to hear when somebody goes to the bathroom in the middle of the night. What? The reason behind this lift was mainly maximizing the space here. Because always doors, always the lid you can step on, take the space. So this is maximized. It's private and also convenience when you need to grab and pull becomes less convenient to be going up and down. And this is just very easy access where you can even go and hold things in your hands and like sh sh open close. This is a little bit narrower bed with pretty unusual, I would say storage for clothes. This is like a containers where you throw things in and take them out because this is always short span of staying here. This window is facing south. It provides a lot of natural light and it really changes the room when we close it. So this is the same principle we have in the kitchen and it was difficult to get the blinds for this corner window so we just made ourselves 3D printing hinges, magnets, completely changing the vibe in this room. I'm standing just on top of the staircase as you can kind of see and then when you get to the top we made a small unit here that's just for storage where you can put stuff when you're up and down. We are very pleased how this room turned out because originally we only had a plan with the carpet and the recycled couches from my grandma's. <laughs> and uh, we kind of made it fit in with a painting purple color, choosing gray melamine. Now what it created is this collaborate space where like you bounce ideas of each other, where you feel, you know, secure and where you feel like Time doesn't really matter. It's this little nook. That's the best word for it, nook. <laughs> this is extra fun as it's angled. Obviously the room is compromised, but the thing is that we are right under the roof and all the windy days, all the rainy days, uh, staying here overnight is an experience because you feel the nature out there. <laughs> okay, let's make it into a cinema. I know this is a little bit screen heavy, but it is part of our lives and we do spend a lot of time uh, working or researching and easy access to technology is just through these screens undescribable. It, it really helps out a lot. This has a slide out keyboard, trackpad, mouse, all of that you need. I have my graphic joystick here, uh, 3D mouse I think it's called, but this uh, again, these mounts these are just so incredible. It gives me all of this freedom to do whatever I want uh, to support a human in that space. And not just that, I can go all the way out and use the monitor here if I want to. I can actually go all the way to the back. Isn't this cool? I play PlayStation sometimes here, I admit. <laughs> Thank you very much for making it all the way to the end. Uh, this view and a support really means a lot to us. If I can summarize this project, it's been really, really tough for us the past three years. Not just because we were building this cabin, uh, but we were also scaling up our e-bike business. We were renovating the workshop and we're building this really complicated camper van while making videos about it. It's possible, <laughs> but Keep in mind before you decide to take on such a project, it really is sweat and tears. All that being said, the struggle is behind us and we're really grateful. So happy it's all been documented and shared uh, so we can remember this phase of life and everything that we did. But the next phase is what I think we're both the most excited about, which is getting back to our roots, getting back in a camper van and spending the summer outside. If you enjoyed this video, the edit, you should definitely subscribe. We have a lot of exciting videos on the horizon, including a container home tour, a lot of van travel showing how we built our bathroom inside the camper van. There's a lot of exciting stuff to come. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.
I told him I was watching him work from here, here, but then I've been watching what he's doing on the table. <laughs> what a hack. <laughs> 